Hello, everyone. Everyone, We're going to get started on topic three. So what we're, what we're going to do first is grab your Envision workbook and, and uh, please go to page 109. And I'm going to go ahead and get the camera started real quick before we start our video. All right. So we are starting topic three, um, sorry, 105. And when you turn this page to the review page, it says, review what you know. So we're gonna do that page together, okay? It says, choose the best term from the box and write it on the blank. Skip counting, the commutative order property of multiplication, the identity one property of multiplication and the zero property of multiplication. So the first one says blank says that the product of any number and zero is zero. So anything times zero is zero. Which property is that? It's the zero property. That's all I have room for. So go ahead and get that written in. Number two says, blank says that one times any number is that number. So which one do we call when we have, you know, 10 times one is 10, and 13 times one is 13. That is the identity property. Okay. And then number three says, Blank says that you can multiply factors in order, any order, and the product stays the same. So two times three is six, and three times two is six. So we know that is the commutative Okay, so you can look up here for the spelling, or if you look in mine for the spelling. So go ahead and get those written down. All right, we're gonna get started on the next one. So if you, um, if you need uh, more time, go ahead and push pause, please. Sorry about that. All right, so on the next section, we're just gonna be multiplying. So what is 10 times one? Anything times one will be that number. So we have 10. Two times 10, 10, 20. Zero times five. Anything times zero is zero. Nine times five. We can do this two ways. We can skip count by five nine times, or we can do the nines trick. If we skip count by five, we can do it nine times. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. Okay. Two times seven, seven plus seven is 14. And one times eight is eight. Five times seven is equal to which one of these down here? So five times seven is equal to seven plus five, five plus seven, seven times five or seven divided by five. Think about the community property. Five times seven is equal to seven times five. All right, we're nearly done. If you need to pause, go ahead and pause and then come back. Find the sum means we're gonna be adding. Two plus six is eight, 10 plus 10 is 20. Four plus one is five, 10 plus 20 is 30. Two plus four is six, 10 plus two is 30. All right, and then the bottom. 
How can you represent six times three using an array? Draw an array and explain how to use it to find the product. Okay, so we need to have three in the group and we need to have six of those. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, oopsie. Two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. We have three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18. So six groups of three equals 18. So we just did three plus three plus three plus three plus three plus three. All right, push pause if you need to. Push pause, uh, I'll do the countdown. So let me back it up so you can see the whole page and I'll do the countdown. Let's see here, I think I need to raise that so you can see above that little thing there. All right, so I'm gonna have you freeze it in, get this in focus here. In three, two, one, pause. All right, come back and we're gonna look at the vocabulary that we're gonna be talking about for topic three. So we've talked about the commutative property where, so we have commutative, where two times three equals six and three times two equals six. We have the identity property where one times eight equals eight and 12 times one equals 12. And then we have the zero property, which is like zero times 50 equals zero, 18 times zero equals zero. And now we're gonna learn about the distributive property. If you want to copy this down, go ahead and push pause for a second and get that down and then come back. All right, we're going to talk about the distributive property. What that means is we can distribute out. We can break it up and distribute it out. So if we have seven times four and we're not sure how to do that, we can break this seven up into a five still times the four and then a two times the four because five plus two is seven. We're going to learn how to break this down. This is gonna take some concentration, so we're gonna really follow the steps. And then we're gonna talk about the associative grouping. So we can, if we have three numbers we're multiplying, we can group these first two, multiply them, then take their answer and multiply it times the next one. Or we can take, put the parentheses here and multiply these two and get the answer and then multiply it by the three. You'll still get the same answer. So just depends on where you group the first part or the second part. It's called the grouping. So those are the ones we're going to be talking about in this topic. Okay. So we're on page uh, 110. Let's skip over here to page 110. And we're going to have that page open while we watch the video. Okay. So he wants to set up seven rows of four chairs for a meeting. Oh, she wants to. And there's four rows in a chair and there's seven rows. Okay. So we're going to talk about how we can break that down into some smaller facts. All right. It says the distributive property says that a multiplication fact can be broken apart into a sum of two other multiplication facts. So let's go back to the video and we'll have them go over it with us. All right, here we go. How can you break up a multiplication fact? Maria wants to set up seven rows of four chairs for a meeting. She wants to know how many chairs are needed, but does not know the product of seven times four. You can use known facts to help find the product of unknown facts. How does this arrangement of chairs show seven times four?
So we see seven rows and they each have four in them. The chairs are in an array. There are seven rows with four chairs in each row. How can splitting an array help you multiply? Think about this question as you do the activity that comes next. Okay, we're going to try that. Choose a way to split seven and break up the array. Okay, so if we break up the seven, let's try this one. We could break it up into a one and a six. What we do is we separate one row, one times four, and we separate, and then we separate this row together six times four, and we find the product. So one times four is four. Right here we see one times four is four, and two times four is 24, and we add them together to get 28. Let's try it if we break it up into two. We've broken this into two and this into five. Two plus five is still seven, but we figure out that two times four plus the five times four will equal eight plus the 20. Eight plus 20 is 28. So it's really important just for the steps. That's what we're gonna be doing. So I'm gonna be color coding. If we break it up into a three plus a four, three times four is 12 and four times four is 16. Add the 12 and the 16 to get 28. If we have it broken up into four times three, Four and three make seven. Four times four is 16, and three times four is 12. 16 plus 12 is 28. We can break it up into a five and a two, because skip counting by five is pretty easy. So we think about what things will make a seven. Five plus two is one that will make it easier, because skip counting by twos and skip counting by fives are a lot easier. So five times four is 20. We write that there. And two times four is eight. We write that there. 20 plus eight is 28. And then the last one shows flipping it the other way, having six here and one there, which was just the opposite of the first one. All right. I know it's a lot. You're probably just ah, thinking, but just um, quiet down any any worry in your in your mind or any uh, questions that you have. And we'll just think about it as breaking it down into smaller steps. OK, so let's go ahead and continue our video. We can do this, I promise. Maria thinks of seven rows of four chairs as five rows of four chairs and another two rows of four chairs. Could Maria have broken the seven rows any other way? We know that she could because we just yes, practiced it. Yes, she could have broken the seven rows into three rows of four chairs and four rows of four chairs. The distributive property says that a multiplication fact can be broken apart into the sum of two other facts. What is 5 times 4? What is 2 times 4? 5 times 4 is 20, and 2 times 4 is 8. 20 plus 8 is another way to find 7 times 4. So, 7 times 4 equals 28. Would the total number of chairs have been different if Maria broke up the 7 rows in a different way? No, the facts would have been different, but the total number of chairs would be the same. Maria needs 28 chairs in all. So whether we broke it up into a 6 and a 1, a 5 and a 2, a 4 and a 3, there's still going to be 28 chairs. All right, let's go back to our camera. All right. So let's go ahead. We're going to, I'm just going to skip the convince me just because I, I worry about it getting a little too long here um, since we, we did the first pa few pages. Okay. So on the guided practice, page 111, 111, it says Raphael broke up an array for six times three into two new arrays. Both of his new arrays are the same. What were the two arrays? Okay. If you have six, what are all of the ways to get to six? We can do one plus five equals six. We could do zero plus six equals six. We could do two plus four equals six. Three plus three equals six. Four plus 
2 equals 6, 5 plus 1 equals 6, and 6 plus 0 equals 6. But which one shows that both sides are even? This one right here, 3 times 3. So what we can do is an array of 3, 3, and 3 plus 3, 3, and 3. There's 3 rows of 3, 3 rows of 3. So that makes it 6 times 3 equals 18. This is 9 plus 9. All right. We're just going to baby step into this. I'm going to start color coding here in just a few minutes to help us keep track of everything, okay? Let's do number two together. If you need to pause, I'm sorry, let me remind you that if you need to pause to get this top part done, get that done, okay? Anne broke up a large array into two smaller arrays. The two smaller arrays show one group of eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's one group of eight and four groups of eight. One, two, three, four, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 This is four groups of eight. What was the large array that Anne started with? We can add these together. One plus four is five groups of eight. We don't change the eight because they were all eight in the group. The group size was eight. We're just changing how many groups there were. Okay, so it was five groups of eight. Go ahead and pause and get that written down if you need to. All right, going into number three. In three and four, use the smaller arrays and the distributive property to find each missing factor. You may use counters to help. All right, so it shows us the whole array is four groups of eight. Four groups of eight, okay? But we broke it up into two smaller arrays. So the first one is one, two two groups of eight. And the second one shows two groups of eight. So then we can just solve it by saying two groups of eight is 16. Then two groups of eight is 16. And we add them together to get 30. Two. So four times eight is 32. Okay, let's do another one. Three groups of five. We broke it up into a two and a one. Two groups of five and one group of five. So the main problem is three groups of five. And we're going to go with the first one. One, two. Two groups of five. And the second one is one group of five. So two groups of five is 10. And one times five is five. And now we're gonna add them together to make 15. So three times five equals 15. Okay, I try to do color because that way it kind of helps me separate what's what. So my green was going for this one here, and my blue was going for this one up here. Hopefully you can see that. The pen's kind of a light color. A little better. All right. So make sure you get this written down. And we're going to do this next part together, okay? In five and six, separate the rows in the large array into two smaller arrays and write the new facts. So right now we have one, two, three, four. 
And how many are in each row? One, two, three, four, five. So we've got four groups of five. So we're going to break that up. Let's break it evenly. Right in the middle. Okay. So this one up here is two, one, two groups of five. What is two groups of five equal? That equals 10. And then we have one, two here, two groups of five equals 10. So that means that four times five is equal to 10 plus 10 is 20. Okay, go ahead and pause, get that written down. All right, let's go to the next one. This one says we have one, two, three, four, five right here. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six in each row. So a five can be split into two plus three, because two plus three equals five. So the first one, we see one, two groups of one, two, three, four, five, six, two groups of six. Two times six goes for that one. And this one is one, two, three groups, and we know there's six. So three groups of six go on that one. What is two times six? Six plus six is 12. And what is three times six? We just did that up here at the top. That's 18. So now what we're going to do is add 12 plus 18. 8 plus 2 is 10. Carry 1. 10, 10, and 10 is 30. So 5 times 6 is equal to 30. See how I color code that the original problem is red? And then when I broke it up into like, this is A, we can call this A, and we can call the other one B. So we broke it up into an A and a B, and we put them back together. All right, so let's have a little practice with that down here. Use the distributive property to find each missing factor. You can use counters or an array to help on a separate piece of paper, because there's not enough room on here to do that. So the original problem, six groups of eight. How can I break this six into a smaller array? I see that it already gave me four. So four and a two, four plus two is six. So what is the number in each row though? That stays the same. That would be eight. Four groups of eight plus two groups of eight. Now all we're finding is the missing factor, so we're not solving. Next one, 10 groups of three. How do we break up that 10? Well, if it we already have a two here, what is 10 minus two? 10 minus two would be eight. Eight plus two equals 10 times three for both. Okay, the next one we're trying to solve, what was the original problem? We have three groups of seven and two groups of now remember, the groups always stay the same. So if it was seven here, it'll be seven here. We're just breaking up how many groups of seven there are. So what is three plus two? Three plus two is five. Five groups of seven can be broken into three times seven plus two times seven. I think that distributive uh, property is kind of fun when you think about how you break it down and then put it back together. It's kind of fun. All right, number 10, eight groups of something. So I don't know what the something is. I'm gonna to go to the other side here and see what it is. Times eight. Okay, it says that it's times eight. 
but it broke up this first eight. It's now no longer eight groups of eight. It's now four groups of eight plus, what would this have to be? That would have to be four because four plus four equals eight. All right, go ahead and get that written down. Pause the video so that you have all of this written down. If you want to color code, get a colored pencil and you can color code or a colored marker that's thin. It has to be a thin marker, but you could completely color code like I am if you want to. I just think color coding might make it a little easier to see. All right, go ahead and pause in one, two, three. If you need to pause. All right, we're going to go to the back side. Okay. Number 11. Hey, Paige, look, there's your name. Paige bakes five cupcakes. She puts seven jelly beans on each cupcake. How many jelly beans does Paige need? Use the bar diagram to help write an equation. Okay. She has seven jelly beans on each cupcake, and there are how many cupcakes? There are five. So we're looking at five groups of seven. Well, it's a five, so we can skip count. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 35 jelly beans. Okay. Let me change my pen here. Fred wants to separate the rows of the array below, this array here. So we have one, two, three, four rows, and there are one, two, three, four in each row. He wants to separate this array into a two times four array and a three times four array. Can Fred do this? All right. First of all, we have one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. So what's the original problem? Four groups of four, okay? He wants to break this into two and three. Can he do that? Can we break this, like if we broke this into two and then this would have to be three, can that work? No, that cannot work. Because two times four plus three times four would equal five times four, not four times four. All right, go ahead and copy that down if you need to. All right, I'm going to move on. So if you need time, go ahead and push pause. One, two, three, pause. All right, number 13. Lane uses counters to make a four times seven array and a one times seven array. What size array can he make using all of these counters? Okay, so what we need to know is blank times blank is equal to a four times seven plus a one times seven. So we know that this array has seven in each row. And how many rows? One plus four. It's a five times seven array. Okay, go ahead and push pause if you need to, if you need more time. All right, number 14. Gavin had $75 on Monday. On Tuesday, he spent $23. Then he spent 14 on Wednesday. How much money does he have left? All right. We could do two things. We could do 75 minus 23, then take the answer minus 14, or we can add up how much he spent already. So we have 
23 plus 14. 4 plus 3 is 7. And 10 plus 20 is 30. So he spent $37 together. And he had 75 to start with. So 75, we always put the bigger number on the top because we may have to borrow. Then we're going to take away the 37. And look here, we're going to have to borrow. Can't take 7 out of 5, so we're going to go over here and borrow one group of 10s. That leaves that with 60, and that makes this one 15. 15 minus 7 is 8, and 6 minus 3 is 3. So how much money does he have left? $38 left. Go ahead and pause if you need to get that down too. All right, we're going to go to number 15. Explain how you can use distributive property to solve 9 times 6. Okay. You could break it down to, and so we have a nine. So what two numbers make nine? What plus what makes nine? We have, let's write over here on the side. To get nine, you can do one plus eight. You could do two plus six. You could do three plus, um, two plus six is not correct. Two plus seven, excuse me, let me erase that. 2 plus 7, 3 plus 6, 4 plus uh, 5, um, I'm getting myself all jumbled up here, 5 plus 4, 6 plus 3, 7 plus 2, 8 plus 1. So all of these combinations equal 9. So we could explain how we could use the distributive property to solve 9 times 6. What we could do is do... 9 times 6 is equal to blank plus blank. How would you like to divide up your 9? You can choose to divide it however you would like to. I'm going to pick this guy right here. So this side's going to be 4 groups of 6. And this one's going to be five groups of six because five plus four equals nine. Okay, so go ahead and get that written down. If you need to pause, go ahead and pause, please. Number 16 says, how can you use three times five equals 15 to help you find 6 times 5. So what could we do? So basically what they're saying is 6 times 5 is equal to 3 times 5 plus what? What would that next one have to be? 6 minus 3 is 3. So the other one would have to be 3 times 5. Those are equal. This is 6 times 5, which is the same as breaking it up into 3 times 5 plus a 3 times 5. I can make that a little darker for you to see. Hey. So my words are... If you break it into a 3 times 5 plus a 3 times 5, it equals 6 times 5.
All right, you might want to pause that so you can get that all written down. And we're going to go to number 17 at the bottom. It says, choose all of the ways you can set the separate the rows of the array at the right. So first of all, before we start, let's find out how many we have right now. We have one, two, three, four, five groups of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so five times seven is what we're working with. Okay, how can we break this up? So let's look. Two times seven plus five times seven. If you add the two and the five, that makes seven. That would make seven times seven. That won't work. How about four times seven plus a one times seven? If you take the four and the one, that would make five. Five times seven, yes. Okay, if you took the two plus the three, that makes five. Five times seven, that would work. If you took this two and this five and add them together, it would be seven. So we couldn't do that one. And then if we did this one, three times seven and two times seven, two plus three is five, so that would work. Because when we put these together, the first, the main number should be the same. A four plus a one is a five. A two plus a three is a five. A two plus a five is a seven. That won't work. Okay. And we're not talking commutative property here. We're just talking about the array as it is. All right. Go ahead and have, make sure you have everything written down that we've done here today so that you can be ready to do your homework, which we will correct tomorrow. So let's talk about homework. On the top, this is just reminding you. The array below shows six groups of four or six rows with four circles. You can draw a line to break those six row, rows into two rows and four rows because two plus four is six. The rows of four stay the same, okay? With the distributive property, you can break apart a multiplication fact into the sum of two other facts. So when you're looking here, in one and two, draw a line to separate each array into two smaller arrays. Write the new facts. You can draw a line to separate this array however you want to and then do your problems. Same here. Separate your array into two smaller ones and write them in. Then at the bottom... It gives you 4 times 6 equals 1 times 6 plus what? What plus 1 will give you 4? So you're going to fill in those missing ones all along here, just like we did on page 111, where we did that down here. Okay, that's going to be your homework on that. And then on the back, number 11 says, Tony broke a larger array into a 2 times three plus a four times three. What did the larger array look like? Draw a picture, so make an array here of the whole array with both the parts on it. Write an equation to show the relationship between the larger array and the two smaller one, ones. What they want you to do is write it down like how we did here. There's the large array broken into the two smaller arrays. That's what they want you to do. Draw and then write. Number 12, Rosa says she can break this array into three different sets of two smaller sets. Is Rosa correct? Could she break this into three equal groups? E equal sets, I should say. Okay. Tell us why she can or can't. Number 13, algebra. Marcus passed for 16 yards in the first half of the game football game. He passed for a total of 49 yards in the entire game. What was Marcus's total passing yardage in the second half? Write equations to represent and solve the problem. Use a question mark for the unknown number. So we know he did all the game was 49 
and just the first part was 16. So how much was the other one? What's the difference? Remember what difference means? What operation you're going to do? Number 14, Lulu buys a dress for $67, a hat for 35, and shoes for 49. How much did Lulu spend? Her hat was 67, her shoe, her Excuse me, her dress was 67, her hat was 35, and her shoes were 49. How much did she spend? And number 15. Akilah drew the smaller arrays to find the product of a larger array. Which of the following equations show the relationship between the larger array and these two smaller ones? Choose all that apply. So you've got three groups of one, two, three, four, five, six, three groups of six and four groups of six. So which ones of these could be the right way to show each of these and when they're all put together? So which ones would that be? It could be more than one answer. All right. I know that this is gonna be a new challenge, but you can completely do it, keeping it all organized um, and it'll go, it'll be just great. You'll be able to do this. I have confidence in you that you can do this. All right. Let me see here. All right. So um, make sure you get your homework done, page 113 and 114, so we can correct it tomorrow. And that way you'll have had a chance to practice it on your own while we still get all the correct answers tomorrow, which you can completely change and that'll help you. So, all right, guys, um, do your best. If you want a color code, that's great. My suggestion with color coding is always pick the same color for the side, different sides of the equation. How I did blue only on the left side or green on the right side um, and red for the whole problem. So if, you, if you're going to color code, try, try a, a little suggestion like that. All right. If you have any questions, please let me know. There is IXL that you need to start doing this week that is based on distributive property. And so you will see that as being a star um, next to those things in IXL. All right, guys, have a great day. You can do this, take your time, but persevere, keep going.